field, not the property. Again, I want to move this back from the visual point so I can create an audio version. So that's why you're probably not seeing much going on in the video. So those are the two important things that I got questioned about. The C-Sharp properties and C-Sharp access levels. If you have more questions, you can email, email me. You can post on the forums. You can make a comment on the YouTube. You can send me a message on YouTube. Any way you want to get in contact with me. Uh, probably forums is the quickest way to get a hold of me. Email is the another way. YouTube, I don't check it that often. I just upload videos and check like once a week on messages and comments and stuff like that. Forums, I'm on pretty much every day and unless my computers are crashed when I wasn't there pretty much four or five times this week. Alright, now the main topic of this podcast, XNA 4.0 changes. The very big thing that you will encounter on XNA 4.0, and I'm talking about changes between 3.1 to 4.0. Alright, so I've released a lot of 3.0, 3.1. Paddles was made for 1.1 refresh, which I no longer support. You're welcome to look at those tutorials, but I don't really support those. I will help you if you have any questions, but I don't really update the tutorial to 3.1, then 4.0, and so on. So I support your questions, I just don't update the tutorials. So if you want to check out the Pawn Clone tutorial, feel free. If you run into issues, you can always contact me. So all those things that I made, I made them in 1.1. I upgraded all the 2.0 to 3.0 and then I created some 3.1 stuff. I'm in the process of upgrading all those to 4.0 except for the paddles one. That's the only one I want to update. Throughout my upgrading process I've noticed the most important thing to change is the color. Color has moved from the frame moved from the namespace Microsoft .exonated framework graphics to the namespace Microsoft .exonated framework. So if you do not have that using Microsoft .exonated framework and you're using color, you need to add the using Microsoft .exonated framework. Now that's half the problem. The other half is they changed the constructors. In my past tutorials, you've seen that I called the color Let's say I have a color that's pure red. So 255, 00, 255. So you can see it and it's pure red. RGBA, 255, 00, 255. And let's call that R. For color, R is equal to new color, 255, 00, 255. All right, that's the same in uh, 4.0. Except for the alpha is a little bit different, but you can call that constructor in 4.0. Now, later on, I want to change the opacity. Say it's a object that when it dies, it's going to fade away. So it's going to have a dynamic uh, opacity changing from 100% to zero. In the past, there was a color constructor that accepted a color comma alpha value between. Uh, it's in bytes, so it's 0 to 255. I think there was a float one. I can't remember for sure. I upgraded everything, so I can't verify that. So, in the past, 3.1 and below, we said we already have the color red, color R. R is an object name. We already said R is equal to new color, opening parentheses, R, comma, alpha value, parentheses semicolon that makes it transparent that gives it some level of alpha value you can no longer do that in XNA 4.0 because they change it to where a full transparent object has no color a fully visible object has color so in that case every sort of a component inside the color Component R, component G, component 
B, red, green, blue, they all need to be manipulated when we do the alpha value. So whenever you want to do alpha, you need to set R divided by the alpha value, G divided by the alpha value, and B divided by the alpha value, along with the alpha value. So that could be a little bit complicated, so they decided a to do a multiplication implementation. So what I've done in my tutorials is I've updated it to where anytime you see new color and we pass it the existing color object as the constructor, comma the alpha value. So we're doing it the old way. Whenever you whenever I saw that, I replace that with color times alpha where an alpha is between 0 and 1 and it's float so that way it will manipulate the color value by the alpha value so basically it's saying color C is equal to new color and we have a C is 255 0, 0 255. Alright, so it's 255 red and 255 alpha. Then what the times is doing, what the multiplications is doing is it's going to multiply each component by the float value. So you can do it the long way. You can say C is equal to new color C dot R times alpha when alpha is between 0 and 1 comma C dot G times alpha comma C dot B times alpha comma and then alpha so that's what's a little bit complicated about the color so let me talk about the easiest way to do this simply multiply it by the alpha value don't make it more complex you already have the color object set up you already have the values of red green and blue all set up simply multiply it by the alpha value a float between 0 and 1 that's the easiest way to do that so that's the color. Okay, second part of XNA 4.0 that changed is the way it displays. The, I'm talking about the computer side here and the phone. The way it'll it uses the DirectX acceleration, so they change it up to where the default is high def profile. High def profile uses a DirectX 10 card with a 3.0 shader so the uh, high def uses DirectX 10 and 3.0 shader if your computer and the phone does not handle that so if your computer does not handle that you'll get an error message saying uh, you don't have a compatible graphics card or it'll say something about your graphics card so I was working on that while at work and I was trying to find out why couldn't I compile a new brand new Windows game that's just the blue screen so I looked at the information and found out that you need to switch it to the reach profile now the reach uses DirectX 9 and shader 2.0 plus so if you have a pretty old computer or I don't know if netbooks have DirectX 10 cards or not but in any case if you're having trouble running the game make sure it's on the reach profile you can get to that by right clicking the project and then change and go to the properties and then change it from high def to reach all right so that's pretty much it for this podcast I went by that pretty quick but the next content that will be released I'm going to finish the screen implementation for the tower defense then I'm going to do the parallax scrolling tutorial, I think. Either that or levels. Now, since I was behind a few times, a few weeks, I'm going to have to be behind on the tower defense. So I'm shooting for middle December for that now. Alright. I hope to see you for a few tutorials, and I hope you have a nice afternoon.